What are you afraid of? Those men. Who are they? I don't know. What do they want with you? I'm cold. Helen, you've got to answer me. You've got to answer me. Maybe I am Helen Calder. I don't know. I don't know. Look out! I tried to get up, but I couldn't. My head was spinning like a record. I kept hearing the name of Helen Calder. Helen Calder. And I ached as I remembered how it all started. I received a telephone call at my hotel early this morning. It was from a man named Floyd Collins. He said he had a problem. He needed help. I made a date to see him that afternoon. I didn't make it any sooner because I wanted to check just who Mr. Collins was. His history read like a who's who. Wealthy, a successful attorney, outstanding citizen. With that kind of send-off, I made sure I was on time. His home looked like a hotel, and the butler was as proper as you would expect this type of butler to be. Between the front door and the study, I walked across an entrance hall about 25 feet wide. The house reeked of money, but it was in good taste. Mr. Collins, when I met him, was no surprise to me. He wasted no time. He showed me a girl's picture and started his story. He said her name was Helen Calder. Helen Calder was a beautiful girl. Floyd Collins told me she was not only spoiled, but too rich. Had six houses like this one all over the world. He said she'd arrived from Mexico City two weeks ago and then just disappeared. He was her guardian. It was urgent that she appear in court with him for the usual guardianship accounting. Collins was desperate, said he couldn't go to the police because Helen, well, as he put it, she wasn't always perfect. I understood his problem, and I felt sorry for him. Why did you wait a week, and why did you send for me? Well, I've been told you're a man who can be trusted, that you're discreet. Has she ever disappeared before? Sometimes for months. I never know where she is. Not until I receive a cable or a phone call for money. Does she know she has to make an appearance in court? I told her. That's why she flew in from Mexico. What happens if she doesn't show up? It could be dreadfully embarrassing. I'm very worried, Mr. Lanyard. You, you must find her for me. Driver's license, huh? Yeah. Age, height. Hair, eyes, it's all there. Thumbprint, signature, might help. Might indeed. I suppose she got this on one of our rare visits here, huh? That's right. Mm -hmm. Now, if you do find her, you'll know her by the ring on her finger. She never takes it off. It's an antique emerald ring and a heavy gold setting, and then there is a, a serpent engraved on the stone. You find that ring and you'll have found Helen. Lawrence Crane. Tell him I'm not at home. I told him I'd call if I heard. Lawrence Crane. I should have told you about him. He claims he's engaged to Helen. I wish he'd go back to New York. He gets on my nerves. Maybe I'd better start off by seeing him, huh? Just a waste of time. He doesn't know a thing. You interest me, Collins. Have you changed your mind about wanting me to locate the girl? Changed my mind? Mm -hmm. No, why? Because you're stalling. Yes, I... I suppose I am. It's just that this time I, I don't know how much to confide in... in anybody. In that case, we're both wasting our time. Goodbye, Carlos. No, no, please. All right. It's that I have reason to believe Helen has involved herself in something terrible. Uh, it may be the headquarters is at a waterfront cafe called uh, 
El Toro or El, El Torero. Mind you, I don't say this is true. It, it may be true. I merely warn you that searching for her may lead you into some danger. In a way, Collins danger is my business. I'll keep in touch with you. I'll say one thing. No man ever began a search with more clues. Goodbye. Goodbye, thanks. That night, I started looking for Helen Calder. I headed for the waterfront, not quite sure whether the club was called El Toro or El Torero. To make matters worse, the fog was so thick I couldn't see a thing. I bumped into a woman. I'm sorry. I didn't hurt you, huh? No, nah, it's okay. The fog's really thick, isn't it? What's the matter? Are you lost? In a way. I'm looking for a place named El Toro, El Torero. What do you want to go there for? A drink. I don't mind if I do. I'll show you the way. You, uh, gonna look for a dame? Maybe. Buy me a drink anyway? Name it and it's yours. Gee. Now I don't know what I want. Does any woman? Say, you ain't a bad looking Joe. What's your name, Jack? Jack. Okay, Jack. Mine's Babe. I want to tell you something. Judging by your appearance, any dame you're trying to find ain't going to turn up in here. We can still have another touch, though, huh? I've been looking for you, babe. So you found me. Jack, this is Gus. Say hello to the man, Gus. Hello. Hello, Gus. Who told you to sit down? <laughs> Dames. Just make port? Mary Maloney. Oh, Irish ship, huh? Greek. Babe, listen. I brought some presents. What did you bring? We're still married, ain't we? Who said we ain't? Hmm. Brought some perfumes and stuff. You know something, Gus? I've missed you. Uh, Jack, you're in the wrong port. Sure. Is it okay if I take a poke at him? Okay, just one. That's a nice left you got. No hard feelings? No hard feelings. Then, uh, let's try again. All of a sudden, the room was slipping away from under my feet, and I was looking for a comfortable place to rest my head. By the time I got off the floor, Babe and her boyfriend had left. Groggily, I looked around the club. I did a take. There was Helen Calder with a couple of strange playmates. I knew I was right. But if I needed more proof, she was wearing the ring that Floyd Collins said she never took off. A few minutes later, Helen Calder's friends left, and I moved across the bar room to her. Helen Calder? Who? That's your name, isn't it? You have the wrong girl. You mind if I sit down? Yes, I mind. You, uh... You wouldn't like to change your mind. About what? About being Helen Calder. I've never even heard the name before. What's it all about? Do I look like her? Identically. Well, how do you like that? I like it. Do you have a name? Huh? Lanyard, Michael Lanyard. That's a beautiful ring. What is it, an emerald? Just some sort of green stone, I guess. It's nice carving. I imagine it's pretty valuable. Aren't you taking a chance in a place like this? Oh, I usually wear it like this. Why not simply leave it at home? Mm. No, I never take it off. No, thank you. It's a sort of um, good luck charm, huh? Sort of. Has it, uh, has it brought you any? All the time. 
Michael. All the time. Helen. Oh, yes, that's me. Does the name Crane mean anything to you, Lawrence Crane? You know, more people I've never heard of. Where were you a week ago tonight? A month ago. Don't you know? Why do you care? Can't you remember? Who were those men who were with you just now? Men? Oh, they'll be back in a minute. Let's get out of here. What are you afraid of? Those men. Who are they? I don't know. What do they want with you? I'm cold. Helen, you've got to answer me. Maybe I am Helen Calder. I don't know. I don't know. Look out! She was Helen Calder, all right. I was going to find her again, but this time for a different reason. I wanted to see Floyd Collins again. I had an idea that he wasn't telling me the whole truth. But I was going to find out. Have you found her? Uh huh. Wonderful. Where is she? It's hard to say. What do you mean? You just said you found her. I saw Helen Calder, and I talked to her. But we had a slight difference of opinion. She wasn't sure she was Miss Calder. Well, is she in trouble? Is she ill? Seemed like a little bit of both. If she's in trouble or ill, she needs help. You've got to do something. You've got to find her again. When I was last here, Lawrence Crane came to see you. You said he was engaged to Helen. No, I said nothing of the sort. Crane said he was engaged to Helen, but he had nothing whatever to prove he'd ever met her. I believe the young man is nothing but a fortune hunter. I'd still like to talk to him. Well, he doesn't know where she is. I don't believe his story. I don't believe he ever met Helen. Why does he insist they're engaged? Well, because, well, I don't know. What difference does it make? Why do you want to see him? Do you want an honest answer? Yes. Because you don't want me to. But I'll find him without your help. Collins had said Lawrence Crane lived in New York. It was worth a try. It was a long shot, but sometimes they pay off. Long distance information had two Lawrence Cranes. One in Lower Manhattan, the other on Park Avenue. I took a chance with a crane on Park Avenue. I started talking and the man identified himself as Lawrence Crane's father. I asked him about his son. What he told me was a real shock. Lawrence Crane was dead. It happened in Hollywood the other day. It was suicide. Three people, Collins, Helen Calder, Lawrence Crane. It was a jigsaw puzzle. I didn't have the answers, but I noticed something in the newspaper. The story said that Floyd Collins had appeared in court without his ward, Helen Calder, to give an accounting of our fortune. Collins had told the judge that his ward was out of town. I felt that somewhere this story had to be the key, but how or why I didn't know. I went back to my hotel to relax and think. I was fooling with a present I was going to give to a friend of mine when... Mr. Lanyard? Yes. I'm Lawrence Crane. I'd like to talk to you a minute. Come in. What do you want? Well, to be perfectly frank with you, uh, one day I overheard something that led me to believe Mr. Collins hired you to find Helen Calder. You're wrong, Mr. Crane. Nobody hires me for anything, unless I'm interested. Oh, but you will undertake an investigation. If I'm interested. I hope I didn't offend you. Forget it. You interest me. What do you want? Well, it's just that if you are trying to find Helen, I think I can help. How? I have some photographs.
very pretty. You take these yourself? Yes. I assume they were taken when you and Helen became engaged. Of course. Look at this. What's wrong? What's on your mind? Murder. Murder. You mean that Helen is dead? Is she? Why? I... You better leave now, Mr. Crane. You don't interest me anymore. Floyd Collins was desperate. When you get that way, you're bound to make a mistake. He made two. He sent me a phony Lawrence Crane, and in the picture that Crane showed me of Helen Caller, there was a calendar with yesterday's date. I gave Crane enough time to get away. I knew where to find him. I headed for Collins' house for a showdown. I guess he figured I was a perfect setup. In court, I could swear that I had seen and talked to Helen Calder. His rotten scheme might have worked, but for one thing I remembered. Helen Calder's ring. I knew this was going to be fun. I knew what I was doing, but I wanted to do it just the same. A man doesn't like being taken for a patsy. What is it? What do you want, Lanyard? I want to come in. I'm busy. Do I come in? Or do you want a lot of noise? The wrong kind. What's the meaning of this? I have guests. Good. Let's join them. Helen has been found. She's with me now, so I don't need you anymore. She's been found. Is Lawrence Crane found, too? Lanyard, I told you before, I'm busy. Why don't you come back a little later? Relax. I'll drink what they're having. I'm sorry, Helen. Mr. Lanyard seemed to think he had to see me at once. That's right. Let's talk about Helen Calder, shall we? I think you've been taking our money for a long while. I thought so too, Michael. Floyd has explained everything to me. Well, so your memory's returned, has it? What about you, Crane? How's your memory? You remember being carted off to the morgue in a basket? I remember nothing. Who are you when you're not Helen Calder? I am Helen Calder. What are you talking about? Of course she's Helen Calder. You've got a driver's license with the thumbprint on it. You think it won't match? I know it'll match. I tried it. It was a smart idea having your girlfriend apply for a license in the name of Helen Calder. But it only proves that the plot was well planned and premeditated. She's sitting right there in front of your eyes. The plot was quite simple. I was shown some photographs of a girl and told where I might find her. I was told that I could identify her positively by a ring she was wearing. The next day in court, I could swear that I'd seen Helen Calder alive. This is Helen Calder. Is it? Is that your ring? You wear it constantly. You never take it off. Doesn't that prove who she is? No, it proves who she isn't. If she wears it all the time, why isn't the skin underneath it white? What are you trying to say, Lanyard? Simply this. I don't know who this charming young lady is, but I know she's not Helen Calder. And this stooge is no more Lawrence Crane than you are. They're just a couple of stand-ins for the two you killed. I didn't have anything to do with this. Believe me. All right, I'm not Helen Calder. Collins hired me. I didn't know what it was all about. He said it was just a gag. Nice gag. I'll take care of him.
talk, Collins. You better talk. You're right. You're right. I killed them both. Collins' fortune is tremendous. There's room for another, partner. You can testify in court that you saw her. I'll never find her grave. Crane's death is listed as a suicide. It can work. I'll do anything. Anything. What do you want me to do? You and your partners better hire a good lawyer. You know, Collins, you should never have sent for me. work before I send it over to your house. <laughs> 